with activism being at your core, um, you know, naturally your politics are going to be a little bit more progressive than the establishment um, and, you know, what people might be used to. Um, but it seems as if the environment there is really ripe for it. And, you know, one of the pieces of evidence we can see for that is that you all have voted to successfully dismantle uh, the police force in Minneapolis. And from your perspective, just please tell us all how that went down. <laughs> yes. We haven't voted yet. We made okay. a commitment. We put, made, made a, a commitment. public commitment. And okay. I think we're going to meet that commitment. Um, but there's going to be some steps, right? The police all across the country have a, basically a monopoly on, on safety, right? And hmm. people want to feel safe. Um, the problem is that, uh, and this is the reason we have antitrust laws when it comes to big business, although they don't always work. But um, when somebody has a monopoly on a, on, a, on a product, on an outcome, that means that they have a lot of power in deciding um, you know, how that gets distributed, who gets what, right? And the police have played that role. And I mm. think what you've seen in the past is that, uh, at least in our, in our department, you've seen the police maybe not out, out and out say, but they have insinuated that if, uh, that if, that if you're too vocal about a, a calls for accountability, that they, that they are going to uh, basically sh uh, strike on safety. They're not going to provide safety. Mm. And so I think that that is, uh, uh, and right now, uh, you know, we can't prove this because it's been too short of, of an amount of time, but uh, there's, there's a big question about whether the police are doing a work slow now right. and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and whether they're, you know, kind of uh, relinquishing their duty to keep people safe now. I think that that only proves the need for us to no longer give police a monopoly on safety, right? Um, you know, do we need to have a response for example, an active shooter situation? Absolutely. As we create this new system? Absolutely. But let's be honest, that's not mostly what we're dealing with. Mm. Mostly what we're dealing with are, you know, guys, for example, who might be trying to buy groceries with a fake $20 bill, right? Mm. And we saw that in the case of George Floyd, did you did we need to have four guns present in that situation? Mm. Right, did we right. need did we need anyone with use of force training, right? In present in that situation? The answer is obviously no. Um, you know, we had a situation last year where a guy was threatening to kill himself. He was, you know, he was having a, you know, a, a mental health crisis, and the police showed up, and because he had a knife on him, they shot and killed him. Um, mm -hmm. Do is that the right way? Is that keeping people safe? Killing people who are threatening suicide? I, I think that that's not the way that we should be um, uh, 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 keeping the public safe. I have real questions about whether or not that's effective or the best way to go about it. Uh, I think the answer is no. And so I think that what we want to do as a council is, is, is we want to break down all of what the police do and ask and take a, like, a real inventory of whether or not force, a gun, whatever is needed. Because in most of what they do, they're not responding to violent calls, right? Uh, and so... So right now, the next few steps, aside from making the commitment uh, to do so, we passed a resolution sort of codifying that commitment. Uh, right now, we're trying to pursue uh, a charter change. For the folks that don't know, the charter is basically like the local constitution. Mm -hmm. uh, in our charter, we say that we have to have it. We force ourselves to have a police department. And so if we want to do anything that isn't the police, we first got to change that. We have to change that from police to uh, uh, the Department of Public Safety, which is what we're going to do. Because um, if the bottle's only labeled police, then only police can go in it. If it's called public uh, public safety, then we can put a lot more in it. Uh, mm -hmm. And then police don't necessarily have to go into that bucket. So um, so that's our next step. From there, uh, we want to engage the public to say, what are all the ways in which you expect to be kept safe? And then we've got to have an we got to have a response to that. So that's sort of our trajectory as of right now. What, what a novel idea, asking the public, <laughs> asking the communities uh, what they think. Weird. Uh, yeah, we, we had the honor of having uh, Melina Abdullah, who works with uh, Black Lives Matter LA. She's a professor of Pan-African Studies here in LA as well, who has um, 
been instrumental in helping some of that happen here in LA as well. Um, she and a council member named Herb Wesson put to get, put forward some uh, the, the people's budget and just kind of trying to figure out. And their their thing is creating a system of people who respond instead of the police. You know, mm -hmm. like if someone's having a mental health a crisis, send a mental health professional. If somebody's having, you know, basically like that, like we're sending police to do things that police shouldn't be doing, right? Yeah. So considering that, um, I'm curious as to where else you might be looking, where you're looking at for models, and if there are any places, whether it be in the country or the world, that you're kind of studying to, to, to get ideas from. Yeah, well, that yeah, I've got kind of two kind of two tiers to that. I think a lot of folks have talked about Camden, New Jersey, which is where I think right. the only place where they've kind of completely dismantled their police department, I'd say. So we're looking at Camden in terms of, okay, what did they do in order to sort of uh, 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 break apart this, 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 this dysfunctional department? But then um, on the results side, Camden just kind of ended up creating a new police unit. Um, mm -hmm which is not what we're looking to do. So we want to figure out how did they, you know, dismantle their force, but not, we're not necessarily looking to just piece a, a new force back together again. So for that, we're looking, um, uh, we're looking internally somewhat. We have a few programs, right? Like uh, we have the Office of Violence Prevention, which is where we have our gang violence intervention unit, uh, which is this non-police unit that, um, that works with, uh, uh, guys who are involved in that li lifestyle and works with them to figure out what their needs are in order for them to exit that lifestyle. It's been actually really successful, more successful than just sort of arrest and punish and prosecute um, in, in, in reducing violence, that type of, that specific type of violence. Uh, but these guys, but these guys have like a shoestring budget, right? Uh, they definitely don't have $193 million, which is what, you know, uh, our, our police force has. Um, mm. There's also a uh, there's also another program at the county that we partner with. Um, they're called they're they're our mental health response team. So we want to be able to expand that. Again, they operate on a shoestring budget. I think they only work during office hours. So if you're having a mental health crisis after eight p.m., uh, good luck, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you're getting the police. And so uh, expanding that to make sure that it can be a 24-hour service and we can actually deploy people in a in, in, a, in a robust way, I think is really important. Um, Otherwise, you know, uh, there are experts at places like John Jay College that come in and work in cities on violence prevention. And uh, we certainly want to be in touch with all of those national experts to figure out, all right, how do we make this happen?